We can talk about glutathione, um, the different conditions that are associated with. There are other nutrients that help you recycle glutathione and that are very helpful in the healthy metabolism of glutathione. And we have a nice handout here. I'm going to pull up so you guys can see. I think it's going to be very, very, very helpful. I'll pull this up here for you guys to see. So there's a bunch of different conditions that are associated with low glutathione. Everything from aging to Alzheimer's to cancer to chronic liver, cognitive issues, cystic fibrosis, diabetes, hypertension, any immunodeficiency and chronic viral issues, lupus, mental health issues, multiple sclerosis, neurodegenerative issues, Parkinson's. I mean, this is like through the freaking roof. It's unbelievable the association with other conditions. And it's not saying this is a direct cause. They're just saying, hey, they test a lot of people for glutathione and they just find this chronic association with these issues. Now, I would say there's definitely going to be, um, there's definitely going to be a causation link there for me. It's hard for research to say that. It takes a while for research to do a causation thing. You got to do a metabolic war and you got to really take people in, give them low glutathione, take people out, give them some glutathione, study the different, it's really hard, metabolic ward studies are tough. So it's, you have to kind of look at more of associative studies versus uh, metabolic war that really give you the causation. Let yeah. me um, show a couple things here for you guys to see. Let me pull this up for you guys. Okay, can you see my screen, Evan? It's loading, yep, there it is. Okay, cool. So these are a bunch of the conditions here that are associated with low glutathione. And then there are the links here. So you can actually see the scientific studies, right? Alzheimer's, the emerging role of glutathione in Alzheimer's disease, right? You can see diabetes. Glutathione synthesis is diminished in patients with uncontrolled diabetes. This is really important. And again, this is the article right here I wanted to highlight. It's called A Review of Dietary Phytonutrients for Glutathione Support. It's in the journal Nutrients, September 2019. So pretty, pretty fresh study. But this pathway here, I really wanted to highlight for everyone. I think this is super important. I'm going to get this just the right size. Does that look good to you? Yeah, it looks perfect. Okay, cool. So let me kind of highlight a couple of things that are happening here. So people that are listening, we got a video on screen so you guys can actually see the different pathways and how glutathione gets into the cell and works. So you have your three major amino acids. You have cysteine right here, which can come from N-acetylcysteine and can get converted from cysteine to cysteine right there. You have glycine, right, very high in collagen and bone broth. That's why I like to do my 20 grams of collagen in my coffee every morning. Okay. And then you have your glutamate or glutamine inside the cell. So outside the cell, these are the big two amino acids. And then inside the cell, you have your glutamine that gets conjugated here. Now, also outside of the cell, look at the, the green vegetables, right? The brassica vegetables, the high cruciferous vegetables, some of the polyphenols like green tea are very important in this glutathione to conjugate it. Basically, it helps conjugate um, a lot of these foreign chemicals. Xenobiotic means foreign chemicals. Xenobiotics could be xenoestrogens. They could be xeno... Uh, neurological things from pesticides, right? So basically, they're going to be chemicals that are foreign to the body that are stressor on the body. This can help with glutathione to GST and conjugate. Con conjugate just means binding a protein to it, typically, so the body can excrete it via the stool or the kidneys or urine, right? Which now, let me inside, point out. Now, yeah, here, go ahead. Now, now, here's the thing. You mentioned that big list of conditions. So it would make sense why cancer would be associated with low glutathione because this pathway you're showing, if you've got a buildup of all these toxic chemicals and hormone disrupting chemicals, whatever, if that pathway is screwed up, I mean, it sounds like you're going to end up sick. So it's not that, like you said, it's not causation, but that pathway could be, you know, if I were somebody like focusing on an anti-cancer regimen, I mean, this pathway here would be a huge piece of the puzzle. 100%. And